I guess I just have to say one thing before I jump in this one questions. I was rewatching some of the show and I, my husband actually said, he was like, who, he's not as familiar with the show. He watches it when I watch it. He was like, who are you interviewing from the show? I was like, oh, I'm talking to the costume designer tomorrow. And he said, he's like, how are you going to do that? And I was like, what do you mean? How am I going to do that? He said, everything is so intricate. And I was like, great. You're giving me, <laughs> getting me more nervous because like, he's right. Every single piece on this show could be the centerpiece of something else. Um, and the amount of detail and the attention that you give everything is absolutely exquisite. So let me just get that out of the way before I just- Thank you. Uh, That's really nice. Thank you. That's yeah. Nice. I mean, I had, to, I mean, I had to, a great crew and, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of sort of, I, I think because it's such a, such a good script and the actors are so lovely, that mm -hmm. people really do kind of bend over backwards and do fabulous work so even yeah. when you go do you know you don't have to hand stitch that little bit of and they just go i am going to yeah <laughs> yeah so you just get the you get a beautiful finish as well i think yeah i think the um i just think like i wanted to look at every tiny little design every i want to look at every button every single thing um, <laughs> So I'm obsessed. For, forgive me, my um, my undying devotion to how much you, how much work you guys put into this. Um, I guess from one of the first questions that I have, from a broad standpoint, um, I mean, Catherine is very, very pregnant in yeah. this season. Um, what were you excited to do in terms of incorporating, like, you know? different a different silhouette essentially I think it's episode two where she has like a she's on a horse Elle Fanning's on a horse and she has like this gorgeous gold thing dressing yeah. Gown. yeah so um how did you sort of want to um lovingly incorporate that into her silhouette of, of the season well I mean it was quite daunting I think at first because the yeah. mid 18th century is basically a very right. predominantly really small waisted mm -hmm. open necked um huge skirts it's all the things that a pregnant woman kind kind of isn't yeah um, and yeah so it was but that there is a lot of um in a, amongst a lot of paintings i did lots of research and as you kind of pick through them there are certain clothes that women wore to relax in mm -hmm. and um uh, and i think probably much more than we imagine they do and they're often they're often in portraits with either the family or they're in portraits, a group portrait, and you'll see a couple of women and they're wearing what's called a robe de volant and it's quite a big gown and they didn't have to be so structured underneath. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started moving towards thinking about how we do volume, really. Okay. So how we do it and do it kind of beautifully um, so that, Elle herself still felt light, even though she was pregnant and she still mm. felt young. Um, because Kath, that, that part of, you know, we're not, we, we've got Catherine and she's not very old. So she's the same age as Elle at the moment. So she's sort of 24. So I didn't want to make her look matronly or, mm -hmm. you know, in any way sort of stayed. And also because obviously she, as an actress, she isn't pregnant, so she's moving around just as fast as she ever moved around before, and the action <laughs> and what happens in the script doesn't really kind of, it's, it's a very mobile kind of acting procedure. Yeah. And so because the sets are so huge, the fact that we could maybe fill them with a volume of fabric and everything it just, just seemed like a really exciting thing to do. Yeah, okay. I just want to touch everything on this show. I want to touch it and feel the weight of it, like costumes, production design, every single tiny little thing in it. Um, sort of going on the opposite end of the spectrum of that, well, not of that, but I feel like we talk about Catherine and Peter sort of in tandem with each other, just because the, the show is so intertwined with, with the craziness of it. Um, I think when Catherine takes over, he says he's free to be free. And he he dresses however he wants anyway, but how did you want to sort of like take that to the next level? Because he literally can do whatever he wants, even though he's like a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, um, we kind of tapped into his 
feminine side. So mm. we did the the baby shower costume was him oh, being just kind of outrageous. I mean, the, the, it was based on uh, opera costumes for men yeah. which at the time. Mm. Um, did look like that. They, were, I mean, they're just a theatrical costume. Mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I think in um, season one, he, uh, Peter has a skirt, and I think he wants to, you know, as a character, his masculinity is so affirmed that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether he wears feminine colours or clothes or shapes. Mm, that's true. You know, so that, so we kind of went with that a bit, and a bit later on. Um, in the series, uh, when he meets Joanna, he's in, in a kind of lace blouse, really. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was that partly came from Nick. He wanted to kind of have, you know, he wanted to wear some feminine fabrics and, mm. um, and he, you know, remains masculine despite them. So it's just, a, it was just a kind of good thing to explore, really, with him, I think. Yeah. And all this, so the sort of, I mean, I think there was a few things that didn't make the final um, edit, but there was a sort of, I don't know, a leopard print again, a chiffon sort of blouse shirt with <sighs> um, lurex stripes in it. And it didn't, <laughs> didn't kind of end up in the oh, get it in series. I need to see that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he looked fab in that. So there was, there was you know, a, a little kind of play on his, ad his adventures, really. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, the baby shower look is so, I love that so much. I think I was staring, I think I might was actually on like your website. I was staring at a picture of Nicholas Holt. Like I love the sort of, I think there's like some teal in there, some pink, there's like leopard on the hat. I was just like, I need to figure out where I'm going to wear that because <laughs> I bought that outfit. No, it is a splendid costume. Yeah, it is, it is sort of, interesting that he that Peter is much of a, a a terror that he is he is you're right sort of um he's not afraid of of I guess like looking feminine or um even in some of his actions like when he when he is there for finding in the first season finding his wife a lover like he's just I don't know there's as much as of a terrible person that he is he's also a little bit evolved in the weirdest sort of ways which you wouldn't expect um, the sort of not not a naivety, but a sort of um, childlike simplicity about something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I wanted to ask about a couple of specific looks, if I may. Um, I have to ask about the coronation or Catherine's coronation look because I like the line where Peter says, "I thought you you wanted to take Russia into the future, not to grandmother's house," and that crown that she walks in on or walks in wearing i i just love it so much i, I love how i love the color of it i love the sleeves on the side um what was the main inspiration for that well it was um t tony uh, mcnamara wrote um the script and in the script um catherine wants to appeal to the people i mean she wants to do something that sort of shocks them and kind of you know is I don't know appealing to their to their very sense of Russianness because she's German so what she does is sort of subvert a, a traditional Russian costume and of course we we couldn't put her in a traditional Russian costume because they they although they're, they're actually very very beautiful to a modern eye they would look very lumpy I think and quite okay. you know and they cover quite a lot of the body but they that basically the kokoshnik which is the headdress the traditional one's quite a solid affair with pearls but it's quite metallic yeah um, and they do they come different shapes but they're a pretty hefty piece of headwear and um the sarafan which is the dress that she's wearing uh -huh. they're traditionally like a like sort of like a smock a floor-length smock so they don't have okay. a weight um oh. but they you know they come up to here and down to here and everything so we had so basically it was a kind of development of how how do you turn this picture that she sees it's somewhere and goes oh that's traditional russian clothing and i think i'll um i'm going to wear that for the coronation how do you change that into something that's a bit of a showstopper which is yeah. the whole idea that she shot the court just in awe um <laughs> 
Okay, so it was, so we went through. There was quite a lot of development and bouncing backwards and forwards between myself and Tony and L and you know people sending each other emails going what about this idea and what about this idea and it was just kind of for me it was sort of looking at a lot of end of show catwalk show moments okay and what makes you feel um you know the kind of awe and kind of jaw dropping mm -hmm. aspect of it um and I don't know what I mean I I can't even remember why we went with gold in the end but we did yeah um, and and uh, and L prefers a kind of white gold, so we went towards the lighter um, okay. side of gold. It um, goes very well with like her like her skin tone. Yeah, skin, yeah. yeah. Pale mm -hmm. color. She looks beautiful. In, well, she looks beautiful in most colors. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're sort of. I just sort of like how. <sighs> that's like I'm. I'm not a very fashion forward person myself. I would never claim to be, but I sort of like how that one outfit in itself from like I guess a like a design standpoint you get so many different reactions to it like when people are like why is she wearing that outfit but then like there are these young girls who like are are there who are like looking up to her like she's the most beautiful thing they've ever seen and she's so yeah. confident when she just like floats out in that outfit and she's like this is what I'm wearing I'm so excited to wear it um I think that's I think it's yours it's Russian yeah it's <laughs> She's like, I did the work. I'm so excited. Everyone's gonna love it. And then it's like, <laughs> great. Um, I have to fully admit that the the first time that we see Joanna stepping out of the carriage, um, I quite literally screamed because um, that thing, dear God, she looks like even the way that she like bows her head up with that hat. Um, I mean, I think Gillian Anderson can sort of like wear anything. Um, uh, yes. It's sort of disgusting, like how beautiful she is. Yeah. No, there was a lot of, there was a lot of kind of, because the carriage, the doors wait, I mean, we have the carriages we have and, um, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I, you know, either we can get hold of and they're all beautifully designed, but obviously they're not designed for massive wide skirts and really high hats. Yeah. And, uh, and we'd gone so far down the design process and then we all remembered she was getting out of a carriage <laughs> and there was a bit of sort of um you know one of one of the people in my department uh, tried on the hat and tried to get out of the carriage unsuccessfully um and i had a conversation <laughs> with Gillian where i said i'm not sure you know we're a little bit concerned that we you might not be able to um get out of the carriage in the high heels in the wide skirts and mm -hmm. in the hat and she she was just like what do you mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a little rehearsal and of course she just came out perfectly. She's like, mm -hmm. it's so elegantly, yeah. Well, like I like how the colors and that, I mean, I, Catherine is just like aching for something that she is familiar with. And there is something about, like there's like red in there, there's yellow, um, there's, I don't know, there's something refreshing and it's, it, sort of made me think there's like a little bit of a renewal there for Catherine, like emotionally, just sort of seeing this, um, this woman who, uh, her mother, obviously her, um, I was to say important person in her life, understatement, sort of, I don't know, I feel like the outfit reminded me how much seeing her mother like revived her almost, which I, I really love. Um, yeah, for a while, before she- Yeah, for a while, before <laughs> stuff. Um, <laughs> I guess the last specific look I want to ask about is, I think it's in the last episode, Catherine um, is meeting a man in the woods and they're having these negotiations. And the, um, the center of the dress is like a blood red and the rest of it, it sort of reminded me of snow a little bit. And there was um, some little detail, like a brooch or like a, a loose bow or something here. What can you kind of tell me about that look? Um, well, it was, a, I mean, Catherine the Great did used to dress in uniform and mm -hmm. I don't think we ever really wanted to go towards the uniform but because because in that particular scene I've, I've I mean I think Catherine had to look strong she had to start off looking strong and one of the things that I felt was quite important was that she didn't wear green like the um, army uniforms because it's just not a very nice colour so it's <laughs> playing around with different colours that would work 
that was somewhere in the Russian army at the time mm -hmm. that would actually kind of maneuver across. So that was part of the reason for um, her going into that red and oyster with, because there is some uh, Russian uniforms that, that were around at the time that were those colors. But also I, I did feel it would be really fantastic if she, if you saw the blood instead mm -hmm. of kind of, you know, shying away from it, that she just ends up bloodied and damaged and that it showed quite clearly on that yeah. particular gown. And we sort of increased the size of her skirt. So she's, she's looking quite powerful. Mm. Um, and there was just a sort of, you know, an all over, we have tone meetings. So we talk about the kind of the o overall effect of um, certain scenes and that the idea that there's this beautiful kind of wedding full of people wearing floral mm -hmm. things and then Catherine and Elizabeth and Venomentov walk in and they're kind of slightly uniform so she's high at the neck and she's tight at the wrist it was it was to give a kind of you know they're, they're coming from one side and the the sort of all the floral drunk mm -hmm. kind of people are on the other side it's a sort of you know it was to give a vis piece of visual imagery really yeah I did even feel like speaking of the strength of her in that scene where it's just her and the gentleman at the table I did even think I was like oh she looks like she's like standing taller even the way that she's standing in that outfit I don't know it's, it's um and the blood especially when when that scene goes wrong um when blood is spattered on stuff it really like popped to me um so it sort of is a reminder with a lot of the show there is a lot there is so much beauty in the show but when it comes right down to it there's a lot of ugliness and a lot of dirtiness that the show really mingles together really well um yeah. and I think it's I mean it's really important to see that on the costumes I think yeah yeah I think so too um I'm glad you brought up the florals just because like Mary almost in that dress at the end and the the final episode with like the the red flowers on like the whitest dress it was just like oh I was sort of <laughs> that's a moment where I was like dying when I was watching it <laughs> Did it you was, like your husband in the matching suit? <laughs> no, my God, yes. Oh, Jesus. Um, okay, um, I think one last question that I had for you would be, um, you know, since Catherine is is trying to put her best foot forward to to influence the younger generation of Russia, um, and we do see a lot of like younger women uh, or children essentially. Um, is there a specific sort of look that you wanted to give them that was different than the adults? Even though, I mean, there are multiple children throughout, but um, I guess, um, yeah, the, the sort of hope for the future of the Russian children. Yeah, I mean, we just kind of I really kept it simple. It's quite a difficult balance because at the time they looked like uh, little adults. Mm -hmm. And although I didn't want to kind of lose that completely, um, we did try and make them not, you know, not be too frilly and ornate. Yeah. So some sort of, I don't know, that they feel a bit, not like modern children, but that there is echoes of a modern child there rather than them being sort of overstuffed and dressed. Um, I'm not sure how, how much we succeeded. We know you never sort of quite get children for the length of time you need them for. <laughs> costumes yeah <laughs> and they grow really quickly in the 10 months that we were shooting they were a different size yeah. the end of it. so okay <laughs> um i usually tell ask costume designers what they would steal for themselves but i just wanted to say um peter and like the beach scene um he's wearing sort of like a blackish lace shirt that i want i'm gonna sneak over to the set <laughs> and steal all of his outfits um, but I think that might be all the time that I have with you, Sharon. I'm, I'm, I'm I could talk to you for literally hours about. Oh, it's lovely to speak to you, and th and thanks to your husband for noticing the costumes when he yeah. was in the show. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Good luck this season. You need to be nominated this year for this. My God. So, um, thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs>